Whether you're a new grad transitioning from a school SLP role or even an experienced medical SLP wanting to switch settings, finding a med SLP job can be challenging at times. And you probably don't want just any job, but one that's the right fit for you. In today's video, I'll be giving you my top three tips for landing the best med SLP job for you. And before we dive in, just know, yes, it is totally possible for you to transition into the medical side of SLP, even if you haven't had medical experience or are a new clinician. Keep watching, you got this. Let's dive in. I'm Teresa Richard. I've been a medical speech pathologist for 15 years. I'm a board certified specialist in swallowing and swallowing disorders. I'm the founder and CEO of the MedSLP Collective and MedSLP Education. Number one, educate, educate, educate. Take the initiative to educate yourself. First up, there are so many free resources for education as an SLP. Swallow Your Pride podcast is a podcast that I created and curate, and it offers tons of free education on all things medical SLP. Plus, you can find a bunch of free resources in the show notes. Swallow Your Pride podcast has also done several episodes on the topics of transitioning to medical SLP and landing your dream job. Want to learn about trachs, vents, and speaking valves? Go to the Passimir website for some free webinars. They have courses on topics like how to get started with the Passimir speaking valve and creating an interdisciplinary tracheostomy team to more detailed education like ventilator basics and swallowing management of adult patients with a tracheostomy. If you're up for a free two-day live event with over a dozen medical SLP speakers that cover a broad range of medical SLP topics, then make sure to keep an eye out for the semi-annual MedSLP Summit by the MedSLP Collective. This is the largest free event that the MedSLP Collective hosts, and it's open to everybody. We dedicate one full day to adult medical SLP education and the second full day to pediatric medical SLP education, and it's offered twice per year. Want free education on voice and swallowing? Check out the University of Wisconsin Voice and Swallow Clinics lecture series. Topics range from respiratory viruses to caregiver burden to dysphagia and dementia and more. This is just a small handful of recommendations to get you started. You can find more the more you search online and talk to friends and colleagues. To tailor your education even more, take courses related to the jobs you want. Yes, even as a new grad. Don't worry about not acquiring ASHA CEUs. Remember, this is all to help you learn and grow as a clinician and to become a great candidate for a med SLP job. Even if you don't earn ASHA CEUs, you can still add this additional learning to your resume. For example, if you're applying for roles in acute care but didn't have any experience with trach patients at your SNF placement in grad school, take Passimir courses. Head to your state conference or conferences on specialized topics you're interested in. There are conferences on all kinds of specialized topics, like dysphagia conferences hosted by the Dysphagia Research Society, or voice and swallowing conferences hosted by Sin City Laryngology. Many conferences offer discounted registration for students or volunteers and many fees courses will let you attend for a discount or free if you're willing to have the scope passed on you. Networking is a great opportunity at all of these events. You never know who you may connect with or who, who you can help in your search for a med SLP role or who you might be able to help in the future. Another way to consume information and education is through observation. See if you can shadow a medical SLP in their work setting. Consider connecting with a former supervisor or teaching hospital system to get more shadowing experience. It can feel intimidating to cold call facilities or reach out to others to ask if there are observation opportunities, but the answer is always no if you never ask, so just ask. And of course, as the founder of the MedSLP Collective and MedSLP Education, I'm happy to suggest checking out these two excellent resources for continuing education and support. The MedSLP Collective is a paid membership program that gives you unlimited access to our library of medical SLP webinars, journal club discussions, patient demonstration videos, roundtable discussions, and our private online community where members and our paid mentors can come together to brainstorm, support, and celebrate. MedSLP Education is a separate business that's not tied to the MedSLP Collective, but offers a growing library of intensive eight to 10 hour webinars on specific topics within the medical SLP field. You can purchase individually medically intensive courses a la carte style, or you can keep a lookout for the medical SLP education certification program we run. You can learn more about MedSLP Ed at www.medslped.com. There was a member of the MedSLP Collective who recently shared a post celebrating their success as a brand new SLP in acute care. Their success was a result of the continuing education they pursued. 
Here's what this SLP said inside our private online community. Huge win, just started my new job and was pleasantly surprised at how much I knew because of all the resources MedSLP Collective and MedSLP Education gave me. I found myself being able to synthesize medical information easier in the chart review and referring to evidence in my documentation. Super glad to start out strong. Critiques given were polishing critiques rather than large foundational ones. This is the power of education and community support. From an employer perspective, seeing an SLP who takes initiative to learn shows you care about your clinical skills and are trainable and have a strong work ethic. What a win for a hiring manager. Moving on to number two, apply to the jobs you're interested in. Apply to any jobs you're interested in, even if they say no CFs or two plus years experience required. Don't be afraid to call local hospitals, inpatient rehab centers, home health agencies, and skilled nursing facilities to see if they may be hiring. They may need an SLP and could be willing to train the right candidate, but haven't posted the position yet. Make sure you show off all the self-study and education you've been doing on your resume in addition to your clinical experience. If you submit an application, follow up politely on your applications. It's easy for them to get lost in the shuffle. If you get an interview, make sure to openly discuss your dedication to continuing education and being open to growth. I've spoken with many employers who have personally told me how much they appreciate interviewing an SLP who demonstrates humility and eagerness to evolve their skills. Sometimes hiring and working with a newer clinician who is open to constructive critiques and new education winds up being a better option than hiring a seasoned SLP who is stuck in their ways and is resistant to change. Don't forget to network. Get to know other SLPs in your area and those working in the settings you're interested in. Is there a journal club in your area or could you start one? What about joining your state or local SLP organizations? If you join the MedSLP Collective, you can take advantage of the member directory and online community to get to know your fellow medical SLPs. The power of networking and what amazing things can come from it in our field. We even had a member of the MedSLP Collective share a really neat win where she interviewed for a PRN position and was interviewed by another collective member. The collective member who was interviewing this SLP told her that she knew she was a member of the MedSLP Collective as well, and that she had seen her posts and knew she valued evidence-based practice. And guess what? She got the job. This was such a cool moment to witness, an excellent proof that showing up in different communities, contributing your questions and thoughts, and networking can lead to positive outcomes when it comes to job hunting. I'll be posting other videos just like this one that you won't want to miss, so make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. Also, do you have any specific questions about how to get a MedSLP job? Leave a comment below and tell me about it. We'll be sure to get your questions answered as soon as possible. Make sure to stick around to the end to claim a freebie or two. And finally, tip number three, decide what you want or need to be successful in your job. What I mean by this is that it helps to know what you need to be comfortable with your MedSLP job. So many times I hear stories of SLPs landing a medical job, but they're not provided with the resources or support they need to be successful or even ethically do their work. This varies from person to person, so it's really all about you. Do you know you'll need access to video fluoroscopy or fees, but your future director of rehab is telling you that their SLPs just use their clinical judgment? Or would your future DOR be open to mobile fees or video fluoroscopy? What salary do you need to meet your financial needs? What salary would be a dream goal for you? If a job is offering 20,000 less per year than what you need to pay your bills, it won't be a good fit. Consider things like the population you want to work with, the hours you're available to work, the benefits you need versus want, and so on. Maybe you're willing to work Saturdays if it means you can complete your CF in an acute care hospital. Maybe you're willing to drive a wider radius if it means you can take on primarily aphasia patients in your home health job. Maybe you want to negotiate working four 10-hour shifts so you can be home with your kids on Friday. Setting your own boundaries is key when it comes to deciding what job is right for you and no one can decide for you what's important and what is not. Knowing your boundaries means you'll know quickly if the role is or isn't a good fit for you when you get your offer. I've seen several SLPs over time share stories about how the facility they took a job with didn't give them the support or resources they needed to grow their skills. For example, one SLP took a job at a skilled nursing facility and wound up covering multiple facilities because of staffing shortages. She was pushed to see way too many patients in a little amount of time and was told that she needed to rely on her bedside skills for dysphagia assessments because these facilities didn't want to spend the money on transportation or a mobile fees provider. They didn't understand the importance of instrumental swallow studies, and as the only SLP servicing these buildings, she was on her own when it came to advocacy. Not only did this hinder her medical SLP growth, 
but it put patients in harm's way. Instead of taking steps in the right direction towards enhancing her clinical skills, she quickly burned out. Unfortunately, stories like this are all too common. So it's important to make sure you know what you need in order to succeed. These facilities aren't just interviewing you, you also have to interview them. They don't have total control here. Want over 120 pages of free medical SLP resources, including information on how to take a thorough case history, medical conditions that can result in dysphagia, cranial nerve exam basics, trach and vet basics, and more, make sure to go to medslpcollective.com to download the clipboard kit. You'll get our largest packet of medical SLP information for free. We also have a pediatric med SLP clipboard kit if you're in the peds world. Also, if you'd like to listen to several podcast episodes dedicated to getting a med SLP job or transitioning to the medical SLP space, check out the list of Swallow Your Pride podcast episodes I've linked in the description. We have six episodes dedicated to this very topic.